Hi, Mike Kennedy. Leatherman, black. Why? Why do they do this? Well, let's talk about the general idea of protecting something from rust. Uh, you know, if you have old ca cars like I do, you know exactly what rust is. You know, and unchecked, it will get bigger and bigger until certain pot things fail and the thing's no good. You can't use it for anything. Now, if you could control that rust and make it encompass the part completely, but make it a very thin layer, what you actually have done is you've sealed out oxygen and, and moisture to some extent. So this piece now can't rust anymore. So when that happens, they usually call it a patina. You get this thin layer of metal oxide. You notice old copper items will kind of turn green. That green is actually copper and oxygen combining, but it tends to coat the piece and protect it from further uh, damage. So we can do that with knives, high carbon steel knives that are susceptible to corrosion. We can control this. So instead of getting the red rust color, we get what we're calling black oxide, which uh, means that we have this layer, or I should say, it's more like almost staining woods. It doesn't build up the diameter of the part, but that, that uh, here's your metal it goes into the metal a little bit. So you actually have turned the top layer of your item into this, you know, iron oxide, black oxide, a different uh, ratio of oxygen to iron, and you get this black color. So number one, what you've got all of a sudden is you've got an item that is much more or less susceptible to corrosion. And they do this with a lot of things, a lot of different things, uh, with different metals and different things they can do it. But uh, so they do it on high carbon uh, steel or knives generally because they can corrode and you can get this coating, which is going to make your knife easier to take care of. But this is not high carbon steel. This is stainless steel, which is actually, from what I've studied, a little harder to get the coating right on stainless steel. So uh, we don't really need to worry that much about stainless steel and rust, right? Well, maybe if we're in an environment like, you know, this is going to be on a fishing boat, salt water, uh, maybe you would want this coated. But the, the majority of the reason why this coating is used on a, a number of knives is to make it more uh, or make it less easy to see. In other words, I've got the, the pocket clip on there, which isn't, uh, you know, this is part you can take on and off, but uh, this part isn't coated. And you can see, uh, you know, you can see a reflection off this, you know, and that's all someone needs to have to shoot in your direction. Now, uh, one of the, I'll probably say the name wrong, but Moshe Diane, the, uh, uh, one of the, leaders of Israel, you see him with a patch on his eye. Well, evidently the story goes that he would, had a pair of binoculars and uh, whether he's wearing them or not, I don't, it's like the story isn't completely told, but basically there's a glint that comes off the binoculars and they shoot and the, the binoculars fly, you know, pieces and it gets it in his eye and he's lost an eye. And usually, uh, Binoculars are coated, military binoculars have a coating on the outside to reduce that type of thing, that type of reflection. But I'm sure it still reflects to some degree. But uh, so when we're talking about something for the military, we're usually talking about the ability for it not to be seen. So in other words, if I'm, I need to use this, you know, if I deploy one of the blades and do something, I'm not you know, basically having something with a mirror finish that is going to, you know, attract a lot of attention when I use it. So it allows uh, your knife to be used in what we call covert applications. So that's why you find it on military knives. And uh, I've got a, I should have dug that out, but I've got a Vietnam era bayonet knife. And uh, 
most of the coatings wore off of it, but it one time was all coated as well. Or I'm saying coated, but stained, however you want to say it. it had that black oxide uh, coating and it is worn off. And it is true that these coatings do wear off. In other words, it's extremely thin. So you can scrape down below that and you probably will end up scraping below it in the normal use of this. I've had this only a short time and I've noticed you probably can't see too well, but there's there's a little little bit of scratching here where the thing is uh, hit when I'm when I'm closing it. Uh, there's some literature. I found a, some of the literature to be a little ambiguous. You know, read one guy, they say this, another person says this, but I get the impression that uh, this has more friction than plain stainless steel. So therefore, some of the joints and things you make with it are going to be a little stiffer. And uh, they also suggest keeping these oiled, and that will protect the uh, the finish more. So uh, that's basically the story of why uh, knives are being look. The sun's moving away from me. Why the uh, the knives are black is because it allows them to be more co covert. They're not shining, they're not reflecting as easily, so that, uh, and this is a matte finish, you can see too, so this, you don't really get a reflection off of it, like you do, of course, with, uh, let me see, uh, if, I'm not right in the sun now, but you get the idea that uh, this won't do. Now, of course, some of the wear parts, they didn't coat it. I mean, it'd be kind of silly to coat the file, because you've got to use the file, and as soon as you use it, it's going to be scraping it off anyway. And uh, the uh, clippers here, the wire cutters too, these parts that you can uh, replace here, you can see, oh, see it there? That's clear of coating as well, or black oxide, I should say. So uh, that's the point to it, is the idea for it to be covert. Uh, with stainless steel, you're usually not worrying as much about uh, corrosion and things, unless you're in a, you know, environment that uh, it can do a job on, you know, like saltwater environments and things like that. So there we go. That's why knives are black usually. Oh, here's an interesting thing. When they come out with some of these new bushcraft knives, I think Mora came out with one, and I'm not sure which one it was right at top of my head, but people had to have this knife, and the first thing they do was they went all to all the trouble of removing the finish that they had put on it. In other words, the knife was black. It had this finish on it. And so why is that? Well, part of it was because they liked the bare steel color, but part of it, too, was, you know, if I try to sharpen this by hand, I'm going to mar the finish, and especially with a knife with... Uh, certain grinds, like the Scandinavian grind, uh, that's going to go up higher uh, on the knife as I do it. So instead of having just this nice little edge here, you can see that hitting the reflection, you would have scrapes all through it, the other part, where you had put it on a whetstone. And uh, so I think part of it is that, that, you know, the black oxide coating definitely shows that you've been sharpening it by hand. And uh, I would say to some degree how how well you do it. I mean, if you had a jig and everything to do it with, you probably could continue to sh sharpen this and keep it sharp uh, without marring the rest of the finish up. But probably with a whetstone, you know, that traditionally used, you're probably gonna scrape it up and it's gonna look a little messy. So there we go. Why the 11th wave plus is black and why tactical knives are black. And so we go into this situation. Uh, I don't know if, you know, the military buys things from Leatherman or whatever, but they have offered it in this style, which would be more likely used in a combat tactical operation. Bye.